and welcome to Married with Clicks. Today, normally, we would be putting out the Kick-Ass Dice Masters game for you guys, but unfortunately, much like many other people out there, we're also suffering from the lack of product that's been out there. It's been almost over a month since we've been able to buy any new boosters for this set, so unfortunately, we are pretty low on our character pool and our decks are kind of starting to stagnate. So we didn't want to show you guys basically the same game over and over again. So instead, while we're waiting to be restocked at our local store, I'm going to go over a few things, kind of little tutorials on how to actually play the game. For a lot of you guys that have already gotten into this, you might not benefit from these videos, you might, but they'll also be out there for maybe there's little things that you guys didn't catch, and so forth. So for today, we're just going to look over the basics of the game, what is included in the starter set, what you need to play the game, and what the gameplay area is going to look at. And then in coming weeks, we'll go specifically into actions, uh, the characters themselves, specific abilities, and any kind of weird, tricky, ruling things. So let's get started. So first, we're going to start off with three main components of the games. So what you have is the sidekick dice. These are your basic resources. Every deck is going to have eight of these. No more, no less. It was a rule that did get skipped over the first time that we went through learning this game. It, the rule for it in the rule book is actually in a very interesting spot. It basically wasn't where we were expecting it to be and it took us a little time to actually find it. But each team is gonna have eight of these, no more, no less. These are your starting resources. The other components of the game, you have characters and their corresponding dice, and then basic action cards and their corresponding dice. When the first, when the starters first came out and we found out that there was going to be a sort of shortage on them, WizKids also put out an announcement basically apologizing that this had happened, that there was a shortage on those starters, and that if you could get boosters, they put out instructions on how to play without the starter kits. So I'm just going to quickly go over that with you guys as well. Essentially they put out a link for uh, for print and play so that you could get the basic action dice that came with the starter set and explanation on how to use standard dice instead of the specialty dice that come in the starter set there. So you'll want, if you don't have a starter set, you'll want eight standard dice. I'm using white or black pips on white, like the standard, like the sidekick dice are themselves. And so on the start, on the sidekick dice, you have a question mark. You've got a little mask that represents wit. You've got a lightning bolt that represents blast, blasts. You have a shield that represents toughness and a fist that represents melee. And then the final side is actually a character. These are your sidekicks and they add to your force. So when you're looking at these dice in relation to a standard D6, so for the the question mark here, number one, and then we spin to the wits is a two, the blasts are a three, the toughness are four, and the melees are five, and then finally the sidekicks are six. So playing this way isn't the most intuitive you will have with the print and play. It'll actually show on the card which uh, D6 side corresponds with which side you would have with the custom dice. But it is kind of a way for you to be able to get into the game without the starter set if that has been a problem in your area like it has for a lot of players. So that's the sidekick dice and then for the action dice, there's, <clears throat> I've got red, red on white, white on red. So most, 
a lot of tabletop gamers will have a whole abundance of dice in their house if you guys are anything like us um but this may actually prove that you guys might have to go out and buy different colored dice if you don't happen to have them laying around like we do so with these ones same sort of deal with these they have three sides are exactly the same showing just a two with a colored background so that's going to be your one two and three and then they have kind of this like pow burst symbol that's going to be your four and then there's one with a little starburst at the bottom that's going to be your five and then one with two starbursts on the bottom, that's your six. And in a little while, we're going to go over what those actually mean. But that's kind of just a standard to go over, let you guys know that this is possible to play this game if you guys didn't happen to get a starter. Kind of just an idea of what would happen if you did with just regular D6s. We're going to look at the game board. There are essentially four areas of the game board. Now, I don't have a fancy play mat that actually indicates what the areas are. So it's a little more of just remembering what my things are for myself and for anybody that watches our games. We've actually had several people mention that they like watching us without the play mat. Just to give you guys an idea that you don't need these fancy play mats to actually play this game. You can just play it on a tabletop without any problems so long as you mentally have areas designated. So and the four basic areas are, I like to put right in the middle, is your reserve pool. This is where you're gonna be gathering all your resources from. So if you think about it in context of like say the comics for this game, this is gonna be the place where you're getting ready to go out into the field with your Superheroes, this is your X plane, your Quinjet, your Fantastic Arc. So this is where you're gathering all your resources. The next place is the field. Let's spin these guys over to Psychics. So this next place is your field. Now there are two areas of the field. There is the field and the attack zone. These are still both considered the field. So anytime you come up with an ability that says when fielded, it doesn't matter which part of the field you're in, as long as you're in the field, this is your battlefield, this is where you're gonna be fighting your opponent and duking it out. The next place is your prep area. This is anywhere where your characters are getting knocked out either from being in an attack blocking an attack, any special powers, it's going to knock them out. It's going to put them over in your prep area where they're KO'd. When they're KO'd, you still keep the character showing. And the only place you don't have, you don't keep your face up is your use pile or your dice bag. So with the prep area, this is essentially comic wise analogy. This is your X-Mansion, your Avengers Tower, your Baxter building. This is where your characters are now getting prepped to go back into the field. So once they're in the prep area, the next turn, you're gonna bring them into your reserve pool, put them on that plane to get them back into the field. The final area in your play area is the use pile. Now any kind of analogy I put with the use pile is probably gonna turn morbid, so we're not gonna use analogies on this. Basically any dice that are used whether they be resources or characters that went through, they're gonna end up in your use pile. The use pile is going to fill up and up and up and up until there's nothing left in your dice bag to roll and then anything that's in your used area is going back in the dice bag. So now that we've looked at the play areas, we'll look at specifically what each die and component is going to do. So starting off with your basic resources. I already said that this is the stuff that you're always going to have. You're always going to have these eight and what you do with them is going to dictate where your turn goes. So we already looked at the die faces. We've got question mark. Now a question mark means wild card. This is going to be any sort of energy resource you use to pay for things in the game much like any of these symbols. So you've got the wits, the melee, the toughness, the bolts. These are all different types of energy that's gonna correspond with different abilities and characters in the game. And the final side is the psychic. 
and this is the little pawn symbol here. You can see it's got a zero, a one, and a one. What these numbers mean is that is their field cost. So that's how much energy it's gonna cost you to take them out of your reserve area and put them into the field. They have a zero cost, so these guys don't cost you anything to throw them out in the field. The top number is your attack, it's how much damage you're doing, and your bottom number is your defense. This is how much damage you can take before being KO'd. So as you can see with these guys being a one, one, they don't do a lot of damage, they don't take a lot of damage, but they are just a good way to have characters out in your field. So that is your sidekicks and your energy resources. Now we'll go on as to what these can actually do for you. So we're gonna look at characters. So you can see the character cards, there's gonna be a name, a subtitle, some may have an affiliation, some may not. There's gonna be what type of energy these characters use and their fielding cost, or sorry, their recruitment cost. So with this game, you can have up to eight characters in your deck and you can have, and your characters have to be unique, which means that this main title here, Beast, you can only ever have one beast in your deck. It doesn't matter what the subtitle is, the subtitle is just gonna let you know what abilities he's doing. So. Even if you have a beast mutate 666, you can't throw in another different beast, let's say, big boy blue. Your deck isn't gonna be able to include both a mutate 666 and a big boy blue. You have to choose which one you wanna go with. So the affiliation is what superhero or villain team that they are with. With the villains, they have a little Hydra symbol, and that just means they're villains right now. The villains don't actually have an affiliation. Uh, they are just, they are villains. With him, he's an X-Men, so some characters might actually have abilities that will affect X-Men on your team. Up here, he's a Wits, and his recruitment cost is two. So that means when I'm rolling my sidekick dice, I've got a question mark, which means I can change it to, I can say it is any resource energy that I want it to be, and I have a fist. So with this being a wild card, this means I can use any, and I have two, so I would say that I'm gonna count this as a wit, and that'll allow me to buy him. Now if I had happened to rule something like this, where it's a toughness and a feat, and a melee fist, I would not be allowed to buy him because at least one of my energy jai has to be their energy type to be able to recruit them. So next, all the characters are going to have an ability and this is what they do in the game. Now some of them may be abilities that happen while they're in the field, some of them are abilities when they KO, some of them are abilities when they KO others. So we'll look at what this beast does as an example. We won't go over each character that I have here, but just as an example, we've got <clears throat> when beast blocks, draw one die and place it in your prep area. So if he's going to it, so he's in the field and say my opponent wants to attack, he's now blocking. So I'm gonna draw one die and put it in my prep area so that I can now use it into my reserve pool next turn to roll those dice. Now he is one of the characters that actually has a starburst ability. So some of his dice, one side of his dice has that little starburst there, which means whenever that's showing, he gets an additional power. With this particular beast, his additional power is instead I draw two dice from my dice bag, place one of them in my prep area and the other in my use pile. So if I decide that I'm or if I end up drawing, I've got now a sidekick die and an Iron Man, there's a good chance that I'm gonna want that Iron Man in my prep area and I'll put the other one in my use pile. So if you look at the final part of their card is the bottom area and this will show two things. First, there's a little here that says max four. This is the max amount of dice that you can have for this character. So he is only allowed to have as many as four dice. You can put as little as one die on him for your team build, but at max four. 
And when you're building your team, the most dice that you can have in your deck is 20, but you may have less than that, especially if you don't have as that many dice for those characters that you're putting in your deck. And then it'll show that he's got a wits. We've got one wits. We've got a double wits and another double wits. Now we've got, this is, these are their levels. These are considered level one, two, and three. There are characters that are specific to a character's level, their abilities trigger off of what level they are. Sometimes they'll spin down a level, others will spin up a level. We'll get more into that later on when we look closer at abilities, but right now we'll just look at the different levels. So he's got his level one. We've got a zero, one, two, which means he's zero energy to field. He's got one attack and two defense. And he's got the Star Wars for this particular character. Now his next die, if I can spin it around to the right one, here we go, is another, he's zero cost to field, so you don't have to pay anything to put him out in the field. He's two attack, three defense. Now his final level, his top level, he costs one to field, but now he's got two attack and four defense. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the basic action dice. In a game, you're always going to bring two basic action cards and the corresponding dice. Now the starter kits are set up with little placement cards and dice to be able to do all four colors and actually 16 sidekick dice. So the starter kits are starter kits are designed for two players to be able to start and play the game rather than just one player going. So it gives you everything you need for two players to be able to play this game. So right now I've just got it set down to what your personal deck will look like. So looking at the action cards, they are much like the character cards. You've got at a recruitment cost, how much energy it's going to take to buy one of your action dice. We've got a title, what it is, and it's listed as a basic action card. Now, why it says basic action card is because there are other cards that you can include in your personal deck. So far in this set it has been Captain America's Shield and Mjolnir from Thor. Those are action cards, but they're not basic action cards, so those would be included within your characters rather than within your basic actions for the tournament or for the game that you're going to be playing. So now we here we've got the same thing where we've got what this ability is going to do when you roll the die. And this is deal two damage to one target character or player. So anytime that this POW starburst flash comes up, this power is activated. So as you can see, we've got the same kind of bit at the bottom here, use is three. So this is much like the character's max. And this just tells you that for this basic action card, you're gonna put three action dice there. Now, this one, as we looked before when we were looking at the standard D6s, it has two, three sides that show a two. Now these are generic energy, unlike the other energy we looked at where it actually has a specific energy type. With generic energy, you are you can designate it to any energy type. So at this, it can be a melee fist, it can be a shield toughness, it can be a wits mask, it can be anything you need, and it'll give you two towards buying something with your energy. Oh, something I didn't go over with showing you beast. Well, beast here has two wits. With a character that has two energy, you are able to spend one of that energy and spin it down to a single energy type in case you wanna use, save that for later. You can save energy. I'll go over the tricks later on about saving energies to use a type called globals. We'll go over those abilities when we go over character abilities in detail in the coming weeks. So the difference between having a character double energy and a generic double energy is that this standard two is always going to be two. There's no way to split it. So if you are going to buy something with it, you have to use the two, even if that means that you are overpaying for something. So let's say in the 
event that I want to buy Storm. Storm's recruitment cost is three, and I have two generic <coughs> dice here that have two, both have two generic energies. Now this is going to be four generic energy, but because I can't spin them down, I have to use up both die to recruit Storm, if I would, that's how you want to put it through. So some abilities, I didn't actually grab one. Let's grab one that's got a Starburst. Here we go. Smash. So this particular one, as you can tell down here, we've got our POWs with Starburst. So this ability has a Starburst ability, which means it's got a standard. Anytime your POW shows up, it's going to do that. But if your POW shows up in this particular place with two Starburst, it's going to do a different ability. Usually the Starburst abilities are just a more powerful version of the standard ability that that card does. When you use your dice bag, this is where your dice are going to be housed when they're not in another particular game area. So if they're not in the field, prep, reserve, or use pile, they're going to be in your dice bag. So when you have your dice bag, you're going to be pulling dice from it. And then when it is empty, when all of your dice are in your use pool or in your field or in your prep area, and you need to draw another die, you're going to put everything from your use pile, put it back in your bag. So I'll go over more what the dice bag does and the functions of everything in the game next week when we go over an actual how the game is set up and how you do each turn and each action within the game.